Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going back to Bulliver. Now Bulliver is a brand that I absolutely love and I think they get a little bit of an unfair write up in certain corners of the internet, primarily because people judge the brand on the watches that they see in the mall at the weekend. And these are pretty uninspiring a lot of the time, pretty tepid, generic designs, the sort of thing that my parents would probably buy because they're not watch people. But Citizen is exactly the same and they don't seem to get that much critique from the wider watch community. Now for me, modern day Bullover is at its best when it goes back into its rich history of watches, picks out one of the classic designs and then modernizes it with current materials, current technology and makes it something that still has the vintage flair but modern durability. So today's watch is the Bullover Oceanographer GMT. This is essentially a GMT version of the legendary Devil Diver. Now originally when I first saw these I was a little bit put off by the price difference in comparison to the regular free hand. But then when I saw Watch Chris's video on this full loom dial with the black and white colorway, I was in love and I ended up having to go out and purchase it. So the question is, is it still in my collection because it's waiting for a video review on YouTube or is it something that's here to stay? Well, let's get into it. So starting off as always with some specs and basic measurements, this one is a 41 millimeter case, but the bezel is slightly smaller in diameter. That's 40.4 millimeters. It's a 45 millimeter lug to lug. So it's not too bad for those of you with smaller wrists. It's 14 and a half millimeters thick, which sounds chunky, but you've got a box sapphire on there. So take it with a pinch of salt. It doesn't wear 14.5 millimeters thick. It weighs 102 grams and I've got it at the moment weighed on this Artem. We'll talk about the original FKM later. It's 200 meters water resistance because obviously it's based off the Devil Diver. And the notable points on this one, it has a full loom dial and a gray IP coating. Well, that's what Bullover calls it. But let me tell you, it's essentially a reflective gunmetal coating as you'll see in the video. So if you've previously looked at the Devil Diver, either the reincarnation or the original, you'll be familiar with a lot of the design touches here. Around the edge of the dial, you have what are typically the loom plots. So they're kind of applied transparent blocks and that's where you would see the loom. But this one is the full loom dial. So as you'll see later on, it's a little bit different. There's a 24 hour scale in between the applied indices. And what you'll notice with this is that the top half is black and the bottom half is gray. So it's kind of a bicolor GMT setup, but it's a very subtle effect. You have of course got the crosshair as you get on all the devil divers. So that means the alignment has to be bang on at the 12 o'clock with the bezel insert. And I'm happy to report it is on this particular watch. The Bullover logo is the vintage style. So you will see it's exactly as it would have been when the original watch came out. And I quite like that touch. Hands are really nicely legible. You've got black close to the pinion and then a dark gray around the loom plots on the hour and the minute hand. Super easy to read the time because of the contrast, of course, with that off white dial. Something a bit more divisive is the magnifying window on the date. So it's set underneath the crystal. So you can't take it off if you don't like it, but equally you don't get that kind of ugly bump that you do when they're applied on top of the crystal. For me, I quite like it and there's just about enough magnification here to make it worthwhile. I did mention earlier, this one has a lovely box sapphire. I think it plays really nicely with the vintage aesthetic. And like I said, it adds a lot to the thickness, but it doesn't wear as thick as the 40 and a half millimeters. Now, one of the ways I think this watch is a little bit misunderstood is that I've seen critique that the GMT function is a bit small, a bit insignificant, and feels like an afterthought on this particular watch. And here's where I slightly disagree. And that is that for me, this is a dive watch. The bezel insert is a dive time bezel. It is unidirectional. It does everything that a dive watch should first and foremost, and nothing distracts from that. However, as a bonus, it has a GMT function. So primarily when I look at the watch, I can tell the time, I could use the dive time function. And then if I take another few seconds, I could see the GMT time. In this regard, it reminds me very much of my favorite Seiko, which is the Prospex GMT Automatic, which I reviewed last year. And that's exactly the same. First and foremost, it's a dive watch. It's got a dive time bezel. Everything is set up as a dive watch should be. But if you look a little bit closer, 
you can pick up there's also a GMT function there I quite like it I don't think it's ashamed of its GMT function or anything like that I think actually it's nicely integrated into a dive watch and I must point out the other two colorways of this watch are a little bit different they have the 24 hour bezel and I'm assuming it's bi-directional although I haven't handled them personally so it really depends what you're looking for but for me it's a positive with this one that it's first and foremost a diver and it has a secondary function as a GMT. And talking of that GMT, it's the Miyota 9075 movement inside this one, which means it's a true GMT. You're moving independently the hour hand rather than the GMT hand. What this means is as you arrive in your new time zone, simply pop out the crown to the first position and you'll be able to adjust your local time. And of course, GMT will stay the same wherever you are in the world. For many people, that's a big advantage over office GMTs. But as I discussed when I had my first 9075 in the Veya, I don't see it as a huge benefit, primarily because often watches stay in my box for a couple of weeks without being worn. And then if I pick the watch up and the date is the first and it's the 15th of the month, I've got to wind through 14 days. Now it's a little bit quicker because you're rotating in hours rather than with a traditional watch in minutes, but it still takes some time and I normally can't be asked. I just end up waiting for the watch to be a bit closer to the actual day and then I'll pick it up and wear it. So yeah, I don't think there's a better choice between a true GMT or an office GMT. I just think it's up to you with where you are in your personal collection, perhaps how much you travel as to which one's going to benefit you the most. Bezel action on this one is really good. It's 60 sort of muted clicks. There's barely any back play, everything lines up. I have absolutely no complaints. Grip on the bezel is also easier than you might think because I did say earlier the bezel is slightly smaller in diameter than the case. But if you look from the side profile, the bezel actually has an interesting shape with a lip where the coin edge is and that makes it quite easy to grip. I'm not sure on the material for the bezel insert. I'll try and have a look online and see if I can confirm it but it looks like either a mineral or sapphire. Case finishing on the watch, like I said, it's a sort of reflective gunmetal. I think I've had this for about six or seven months now, and there's barely any scratches visible at all. Definitely nothing other than very minor surface imperfections. The coating seems to be holding out well, so that is a good sign, but I'm not particularly aggressive with my watches. I do tend to baby them, so if you tend to smash them around and scrape them on walls every day, I honestly can't tell you how well it will hold up in that situation. Case back, there is nothing interesting I can tell you. It's screw down, which keeps the water out. It's got radial brushing and some specs. That's literally it. Thankfully on this, it's a 20 mil lug width. So you'll have plenty of choices for straps and you might need them. So I'll move this on and we'll talk about a few of the pros and cons. But just before we do, if you're enjoying the video today, please don't hesitate to like the video with the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and of course, hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any future uploads. So we'll start with some of the negatives on this, and I want to talk about the full loom dial. Now on one hand, when you give that full loom dial a blast with the UV torch, it looks awesome. It looks fantastic, and I was quite excited when I first did that. However, when you see how fast it fades, it makes me beg the question, was it worth having a full loom dial at all? Five minutes forward on the loom shop and the full loom dial is basically gone and I'm relying on the hour and the minute hand themselves rather than the imprint against the full loom dial, if that makes sense. I had originally wondered why Bolova didn't do solid black on the hands and why they had put loom on the hands in the first place. Maybe they did and then they realized how quick their full loom dial fades and they went back and thought, yeah, you know what? We may as well loom the hour and the minute hand. Now I haven't had a lot of full loom dials. I had a Tag Heuer F1, um, an older one that had a full loom dial. And that I seem to remember did last a little bit longer than this one. So I'm curious if you've got full loom dials in your collection, how long do you find they last? Are there ones out there that genuinely a few hours later are still gonna be legible with the hour and the minute hand? Let me know, cause I just don't have that experience. But yeah, for me, that was a little bit of a disappointment. And the second thing as a result of that is that you're sacrificing the color match between the dial and the bezel, for example, because of the full loom. Full loom dials always seem to be a little bit off-white. They're not full white, they're more like a, I guess like an ivory. And that means that the bezel insert on this is bright white, like appliance gloss white. And then the dial is off-white, it's slightly mismatched. And considering how weak the full loom dial is, I'd rather have had regular loom and a crisp white dial as well. Or 
Failing that, they could have matched on the bezel insert with the slightly off-white. The next big negative for me is the included FKM strap. The rubber that it comes with is soft, it's supple, it looks fantastic, it really suits this watch. So what have I got to complain about? Well, on the ends of the rubber, as you'll see in this video, it sort of flares out. And because it has some internal plastic, I think, to strengthen the ends, it doesn't want to conform to a smaller wrist. So on my wrist, when I wear it, although it's quite comfortable, it doesn't really sit very nicely around my wrist. And I get these ugly gaps either at the top or the bottom, depending on where the watch is positioned. So that's why I ended up changing it onto a sailcloth strap, which I think works much better for me. You'll see here on the Strapsco sailcloth, I don't have that issue. And it looks nice on the black, but the pinnacle for me is the green of the Atom. And just talking about sailcloth straps, with Strapsco and with Atom, it's an interesting comparison to make because Strapsco is a lot more affordable and Atom is really quite expensive. But here's my take on it. The Straps Co. is a decent quality sailcloth on a budget, but it's not particularly soft in comparison to the Artem. The Artem for sure is a lot more comfortable. It doesn't have anywhere near the same refinement where the holes are punched. The Artem's got this nice double strength with the rubber there, much smaller holes, whereas the Straps Co. looks a little bit ungainly where they've punched these holes through. And finally, and the biggest thing for me, is that where these spring bars go, the Artem sits nicely around the spring bar, there's no gaps. The straps coat has this huge gap. So if your lug is drilled for the spring bar at the edge of the lug, then you get this really unsightly gap on the watch. It's not going to be a problem on all watches, but it's something to bear in mind with the straps coat. I am aware of the steep prices on the Artem. So for me, the Artem is something that I'd use on a more expensive watch, something that would justify the cost of that kind of strap. And the Straps Co. Sailcloth is something that I'd use on a cheaper watch because it's not worth spending more for me on a strap than the value of the watch. Anyway, that's enough on straps. Let's get back into the Bulliver. I think the only other major drawback for me with the Bulliver, and this goes for the brand in general, is that a lot of their watches are priced a little bit crazy. I mean, this one, the retail is $1,795. That makes it more expensive as an RRP than my Swiss made Mido Decompression Diver GMT. And I'm sorry, but I just don't think it's worth that. And if you go online, I'm right, because I can instantly find this watch locally available for 30, 35, 40% discount. It's not as bad as the whole Invicta 70, 80% off, but Citizen do it as well with their watches. And then I guess because they own Bulliver, that's why Bulliver does it with their watches. But I don't like this pricing strategy. If you're gonna sell the watch realistically, with a 35, 40% discount. Just sell it at the lower price to start with and keep it there. For me, this false big discount that seems to run pretty much all year round really does cheapen the brand. And with watches like this, they're trying to push into a price point where you don't wanna be doing that. So I suppose it wouldn't be unreasonable to say that if you're not really fussed about this colorway or about having the GMT hand, then there's probably much more value in the freehander Devil Divers than there is in the GMTs. That said, there is a lot of things I like about this watch. Obviously, I've talked about the looks, and whilst they're subjective, for me, I think it is a very handsome watch. The build quality is also really good. It doesn't feel out of place when you're talking about a watch that is, let's say, around a thousand Canadian dollars. As you can see, it keeps good time on the time grapher. And something that I thought might be a little bit more of a challenge is the crown, because at first glance, it looks rather small. But actually, it's really easy to grip. The knurling is deep and the threading on the crown is really smooth. So props to Bullover for that. It's those small details that you expect when you're paying this kind of money for a watch. So let me bring this video to a close. For me, the fact that this watch doesn't look like any other dive watch, especially in this colorway, makes it very unique. And that's the biggest reason for me to keep it in my collection. I don't think it's good enough to compete with equivalent Swiss watches at its RRP, that $1,795. But I think if you get it with 35, 40% discount, which you seem to be able to get, then I think it's a reasonable value watch. I love vintage charm and I love something that feels purposeful, even though I don't go diving, I don't even really go swimming. I just occasionally splash it in the shower 
or when I'm doing the dishes. For some reason, it still feels good to me to have something that is so purposeful and something that has that rich history. So yes, I think this one probably will stay in my collection. I'm not gonna say forever, but I think for a good while yet, because I don't have anything else that looks this cool with as much vintage charm. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Bullover Oceanographer GMT series, if you've picked up one of them, if you're gonna pick up one, or if you really don't like it. I'm always interested to hear, but please keep the comments respectful and talk to each other and to me as you would do if you were face to face. That said, for the most part, I enjoy reading your comments and I reply to as many as I can. Thank you so much for watching and I hopefully will catch you on the next one. See you then. Cheers.